Hallelujah, let's give all glory to God. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of that land. Thank you for the praise. As we are giving worship here, uh, our next generation, our prosperities will dream and dream, uh, dream the dreams. And all of our families will come back to the Lord. And the 237 nations will be restored. And may this worship be the worship where you really enjoy those answers. They, uh, we have the festival in the, uh, Thanksgiving festival in Korea. And may the answers of breaking down the forces of darkness be in your field. Whatever the field, there are idols. And to break down the idols is only by the gospel. And may you be the witness to really uh, save and break down the forces of the idols. What is happiness? If somebody asks you, are you really happy, then how will you answer them? Are you really happy? Then why, why are you happy? Because you possess a lot of things, is that why you're happy? And yes, there can be a happiness inside of that. But is that real happiness? Many people live for success. Why are they trying to have success? Because they only have one life to live. So that is why they want to really su have success and live on. And there are people who believe in Jesus. They believe in Jesus so that they can be happy. Then so, are you happy? And there is things that uh, people persecute the churches for. Why do churches only say that they have uh, salvation in only Christianity? There are even people who live a walk of faith think this way. The, then do you think this is self-righteousness? In the Bible, it doesn't speak of the gospel. It only speaks of the gospel. Then why, is, why was the reason for the seven disasters that happened inside the Bible? That is because they were not inside of the only gospel. That is why they faced those seven disasters. Then we must see for ourselves and confirm if in our life, Christ is only inside of our life. And we must always ask ourselves and question ourselves. Do I really have happiness? Is Christ has Christ become only inside of our life? We must be happy. God has created us so that we can be happy. But because we have lost hold of that happiness, that is why inside of us, inside of our hearts, we seek for happiness. But fundamentally, if we do not communicate with God, then we do not have happiness. 
just because you come to church, you are not happy. Really, communicating with God is the real happiness. Many people have the standard of possessing a lot of things or not as their standard of happiness. But be, or the things because they learned a lot or not, uh, they have that st as a standard of their happiness. That is not the standards. Communicating with God is the real happiness. If you do not possess the things that other people have possessed, it, when we are communicating with God, then we are happy. Even if you are unlearned, if you are inside and communicating with God, then we are happy. Why is that? Because God has cr created us so that we can communicate with God. To communicate with us, that is why God has created each and one of us. And that is why created in His own image means this. The reason for God breathing uh, life inside of us is for this. And the reason that He has given us the Word is so that He can communicate with us. We live inside of this world. But we must not fall inside of this world and we must live a life that communicate where we communicate with God. Inside of that, real happiness comes out. David confessed, because the Lord is my shepherd, I have nothing that I need. That was his confession during his hardest time. If you see David's situation, he cannot give that kind of confession. But the David, who was communicating with God, he was able to give that confession. The situation or the surroundings was not the problem. The Lord is my shepherd. Because the Lord is my shepherd, I am satisfied. And I am sufficient. And I am happy because the Lord is my shepherd. That is why we must first go inside of the uh, communication with God. And there we are able to receive the guidance of God. And there we receive the blessing through the Holy Spirit and the knowledge of God. Why must we only believe in God? Why do we say that only instead of Christianity there is salvation? Aren't all the religion a good thing? Isn't all of the religion the same thing? But there is a difference between Christianity and other religion. Is salvation. In Christianity, we say that uh, all mankind are inside of original sin. Only inside of Christian Christianity, they speak of this. And that is why if you see Romans 3.23, because we are all inside of sin, we cannot be, be a righteous person. We cannot seek for God's glory because we are fundamentally inside of this original sin. If you see in Romans, because through one person, Satan, uh, sin has come. And through that sin, death has come. 
Because all mankind inside of this original sin, that is why death has come. And this is um, the incident of the original sin that no one can talk, uh, speak to you about. And the gospel is speaking of for all the people to be revived. And that is why the Bible speaks to us about, about Satan and the work of Satan. In the Bible, it says that we must save those people that are inside of the hands of Satan. The result of the people that are caught by the hands of Satan is idle. It's the problem of original sin. And the people that are caught by the hands of Satan, as a result, idol worship is shown. As we live our walk of faith, uh, we must know uh, the different difference between the gospel and idols. And if you see in the Bible, it says, do not worship the idols. But in other religions, they don't speak of this. Only inside of the Bible, they say that do not worship the idols. If you see in Exodus 20, they say, uh, it says, three to four gen fourth generation will perish because worshiping idol is worshiping demons. If you see in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, 1 uh, Corinthians, then uh, serving idols is serving the demons. Uh, serving or uh, worshiping the things on this earth is worshiping demons. Do uh, demons help you? It might seem like they're helping you, but they're not a being that helps. They just uh, steal and make you perish, and that is Satan. The being is of, that steals our life and giving us perish, uh, making us perish is Satan. And if you see in verse 15 today, it says, Therefore, watch yourselves very carefully. Because But it says, you saw no form on the day, so don't make any image or form of some kind of God and do not bow down to it. Why do they make those kind of things? Because they're spiritually dim. And that is why they will write something down and they will bow down to it. And they will gather water and they'll bow down to the water. And they're just praying to that. But the problem is, answers come. That is the problem. But is that true answer? That is the work of demons. That is why do not make any form and do not do idol worship. That is why God is telling us. In religion, it's the same thing. That is why they make some kind of form or image and they'll bow down to that. Do politicians know this? Do people who are making this culture uh, know of the work of Satan? Because they do not know the work of Satan, that is why they keep on creating this. And that is why they're just using that and people will come as Uh, 
the, uh, they will, uh, the reason that disaster comes is because that is the result of idol worship. The more people do idol worship, the more disaster will come, continue to come. And as a result of that disaster is the mental problems. Because they do not have, they do not know the spiritual things, that is why they have no spiritual strength. That is why spiritually they are faced with problems. That is why in the Bible it says, do not worship idols and do not make any form of any idols. Right now, the people are all crumbled down by Satan, and they're just summits of Satan. And this Satan has taken over the 237 nations, and they make, he makes it seem as if it's some kind of a great thing. And he has plowed into the 5,000 unreached people groups. And as a result, all of the our prosperity and next generation are, are dying. Our idols only seen to the eyes. There are idols that is unseen to our eyes. The idols that are unseen to our eye, eyes are more important, but people don't even know if that is idol or not. If you do not emphasize the gospel, then everything is idol. All this ideology in this church, in the church, are all idol worship. And it's all become because they do not emphasize the gospel. They must only speak of the gospel, but because they are always talking about ideology and some church authority, that is why all these kind of problems have come. Christianity is a um, it has a power of miracle. But if you do not have the gospel, you will fall into unhealthy mysticism. If you fall into unhealthy mysticism, you are self-centered. They do not believe in the word of God. They do not even listen to the sermons of the pastors because they think that they need something else other than the Word. They think they need something that connects directly with God. And that is uh, diseasing, uh, making the churches be diseased. And this is all self-centered. And also, legalism. Law has a work of making us go back to the Christ. The law is God's word. But because we lose hold of the gospel, this law because becomes legalism. Because they do not know this, that is why they uh, uh, judge other people with this legalism. Even if we have some kind of act where actions where uh, that is different from the law, Christ has finished all of it in the Christ. We have a lot of flaws even if we believe in Christ. But Christ has, uh, God has called us righteous because through Christ we are called as righteous. 
And that is why if we are different, if we act differently from the law, it is okay. How are uh, Catholics? You must really know that they have a lot of uh, image and figures. And they have a lot of idols that are in a form or some kind of image. But in today's passage, it says, when he met a, a God in Mount Horeb, he saw no form of God. All the people that are in a religious organization and do a transcendental meditation movement and some other movements, they bring about a great result spiritually. But knowing the difference of gospel and religion, you will receive answers. Religion is something that we seek for, but gospel is God coming to us. God has come to us with Christ, through Christ. That is why if you see in Romans 5.8, As when we, we, when we, as we were sinners, God, Christ has died for us. And God has a, a confirmed the love of God. And that is why the one that can give us salvation is Christ. As a true king, uh, he has crushed the head of Satan who brings disasters. And as a true priest, he has finished everything uh, over all of our sins, which will bring about disasters on the cross. But as a true prophet, Christ has, uh, is leading us through with the Holy Spirit. That is why what is more important than uh, our action is enjoying that God is with me. Living a kind life doesn't bring you salvation. Many people say that they must live a correct life. But that is, this is a second thing. We must believe in Jesus Christ to receive salvation. As he speaks of uh, this, do, do not, as he says, do not worship the idol worship, I, idols, uh, he speaks of the city of refuge. To the Israelites, for at the last time, he speaks of two things. He says, don't worship idols and the, uh, remember the city of refuge. And he says, always remember this. That is why we must always know this city of refuge. What, what does the city of refuge uh, show? It is symbolizing Christ. Why did, he make, why did they make the city of refuge? It is to save those people who have sinned. People who accidentally commit sin, if they run and flee to the city of refuge, they are saved. We have sinned, but the one that saved us is Christ. That's why if you see in Mark, uh, in the book of Mark, He has become the ransom for us and has finished all of our problems. And that is why if you see in John, um, John 19.30, his, He has said He has finished everything. He has finished all of sin problems. And in Romans 8, 1, and 1 through 2, 
So whoever is inside of Christ, no one can uh, condemn them. We cannot condemn ourselves either. We are always condemning other people and we condemn ourselves. But in the Bible, it says, Romans 8, 1, 2, it says, whoever is inside of this, uh, whoever is inside of Christ, they can, no one can condemn them. And Christ has finished all of our sin problems. And as a result of that Christ has finished all of our problems, He died and He has resurrected. And that means He has finished all of our problems. The, that Christ has resurrected is the evidence of all over all evidence that He is God. And whoever believes in whoever believes in this Christ, we ourselves are revived also. And that is why the fundamental of Christianity is the resurrection of Christ. God, uh, Christ has died for me and Christ has resurrected for me. And enjoying this, may happiness be overflow inside of you. Yesterday, uh, in the core message, a uh, pastor talked about 24 happiness, thanksgiving, and power. Oh, then what is 24 happiness and thanksgiving and power for you? And I thought to myself, inside the car, then what is the 24 happiness for me? Then what is the 24 thanksgiving for me? And then what is the 24 power for me? I thought uh, of Romans 5.8. Christ has died for me. And that is the uh, confirmation of that God loves us. And through Christ, God has called me to be used by Christ and God. And I want to be used by God. And through that, I prepared the message. That, will, that is true happiness for me. And that is thanksgiving for me. And that is true power for me. What is your 24 happiness, thanksgiving, and power? Christ has died for me and He has resurrected for me and then that is everything. The thanksgiving for that. Inside of that, all things will, must come out. And I bless you in the name of Christ that you enjoy this as a first. Our introduction is long. Our introduction was long, but our main theme will be short. Even now, all the world is dying of idolatry. And if you see in verse 16 today, it says, Do not carve image for yourself and in the form of any figure. Have you seen that the idol worshipping is the problem of your yourself, your family, and the world? Read from verse 16 through 18. Do not, you mustn't just read this. This is all the things that is happening inside your family, and it's and this is the problem that is happening inside of the world and inside of our field. And if you see in verse 19, 
한 만민을 위하여 등 배정하신 것을 보고 미혹하지 말라 했습니다. It says, uh, you be drawn away and bow down to them and serve them. And what are the things that... Uh, it says, beware, be, beware, lest you raise your eyes to heaven and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, it's talking about the suns and the moons but people are bowing down to that and serve, uh, worshipping that. Right now, that is happening inside this world right now. But they're serving, uh, they're worshipping that, but experience comes to them. That is why people are deceived by that. If answers and experience do not come, then they do not, they won't, they won't be deceived. But because those things come, that is why they are deceived. then we must really know. Satan also gives us experience. Uh, shaman, shamans who are demon-possessed, they have experience of possess, possessing of demon. It's not important for chasing out demons or being possessed by demons. You know, Matthews, in the book of Matthews, one demon goes and seven comes in. And that is why the, this man became worse than he was before. That is why we must be raised up only by the gospel. If you are raised up by the gospel, then we don't need experience. It's okay if you do not have experience. Why is that? In 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That is why it is okay if you have no experience. Because we are a new creation. That's why in John 5, 24, it says, Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me in the eternal life and will not be condemned. But before that, we were caught by Satan. But now we are a new creation. That is why if you see... Uh, we are sent from death to life. And if you see in John 1, 12, we are given the authority to become and become a children of God. And Romans 8, 2, it says, the, we are set free from the legal of sin and death. And if you see in Romans 6, 6, I will, uh, you, uh, you, that we shall no longer be slaves to sin. And there, we are able to have the answer of the three Transcendences to the people who are set free from sin and we are set free from sin and we are no longer slaves to sin and to those people the blessing of blessing of the throne is given to us Christ has sat in the right hand of God and He has control of all, all of our lives and He is giving us power and He has uh, authority of all, all the things and is working with us. And right now, Christ is at work. What is he? Uh, what is he have authority over? Is the world evangelization? Is the gospel? And that's why when wherever we go, the transcending time and space answers are given to us. Right now, Satan is transcending time and space also. 
But when, as we pray, uh, the work of transcending time and space will happen. Even if you're inside of the middle of the ocean, God is holding us. It is talking about the transcending time and space. Uh, Jesus has shown himself to the disciples that are uh, shaking in fear. He just walked through the wall and he said, Peace be with you. Uh, this, all this blessing is uh, given to the people who are saved. That is why wherever we go, darkness crumbles and the light of 237 nations is shown. And I bless you in the name of Christ that you really enjoy this inside your field. And second point. Always keep the true grace of salvation inside your heart. In verse 15, it says today, it says, Therefore watch yourself very carefully, since you saw no form of the day that the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the midst of the fire. When we restore salvation, that is where everything comes. What is the standard? Or what is the condition for my happiness? As I am saved from all of our sins. And that is why we must always remember salvation. And relaying this salvation is our work, uh, our, is our mission. In verse 22, it says, I will die in this land and I will not cross the Jordan. The next part is more important. But you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. It says, you are about to cross over and take possession of that good land. This is our mission and blessing that we must relay to a other people. This is, uh, we have a mi mission that we must relay. You have a mission to relay this to our families. For our family to be receive salvation is in God's hand. If you see in Book of Acts, as I only believe in Christ and you and your household will receive salvation. God has a plan to save all of our family and our household. And He has a plan to save our nation and the whole world. And God wants to show that God is with us to the world. And that is our mission and that is God's blessing. And that is why we, we must just start with the gospel. If we really go inside of the gospel, our problems, our diseases, it has no, it, it doesn't matter. Without us even knowing, that will be solved. That is why always, every day, go inside of the gospel. Wor working diligently is the ne next thing. If you do not match with God, then working diligently, it has no matter. Act our actions are also after re receiving salvation. When we receive salvation, our thoughts will change. 
not just our thoughts, but our actions will also change. In, uh, Joseph, who was sold as a slave, saw God's plan. And that is why Joseph didn't uh, uh, didn't accuse a persecuted uh, the Potiphar's wife. And David, he didn't kill King Saul even if he even though he could, but because because God he knew God's plan, he regretted cutting off uh, he regretted cutting off the cloth or the clothes of King Saul. This means that our acts will change and even our thoughts. And wherever we go, we are guided by the Holy Spirit. And that is when Satan gives up on you. If you do not know the gospel, then church becomes a playground for Satan. That is why we must only speak of gospel. I'll come to a conclusion. This the passage that we saw last week. Deuteronomy 4.10 This is the word that for all the people who are going to scatter to the family. Let's take a look at verse 10. Let's take a look at 9 to, through 10. Only take care and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. How on the day that you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, that I may let them hear my words, so they, so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on this earth, and that they may teach their children so. That is why we must really teach our children. If we see the flow and the stream of our family and the, our household, you will know that without this, we have no hope. That is why if you see in verse 9 at the end, it says, Make them known to your children and your children's children. In verse 10, in the, at the end, it says, it says, so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live. And knowing this gospel, may you really have success inside your field. Um, dear God, 